Hi, I'm Sarah Bates, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of a digital health startup called Mamament. Before starting my company two years ago, I was a data scientist and engineer. And that transition from a technical role to startup founder and CEO has been challenging. Rewarding, but definitely challenging. So what I'm going to share today are some of the lessons I've learned along the way. It's basically what I wish someone would have told me before I started this crazy journey. For some context, I'll start with sharing a little bit about who I am and how I got here. My background is pretty technical. I have an engineering degree in operations research from Cornell and a master's in information systems from Northwestern. Being technical and good at math have always been a big part of my identity. I also always knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I ran a machine learning consulting company before MamaMend and worked primarily with startups. While helping them build and and implement models to better serve their customers, I learned about the challenges that would come up. And at the same time, I was brainstorming interesting startup ideas. And then I got pregnant and had my first kid. And as a result, I found a problem that really stuck with me. And that problem was that new mothers are in the dark and aren't getting the help they need to recover from childbirth. And that leads me to lesson one. Lesson one, keep it simple. As engineers, we love engineering solutions to problems, but not every problem needs an engineering solution. Sometimes a simpler solution is better, especially to start. When I first started MamaMend, I envisioned this full featured app that would do all these things, collect a ton of data, make a ton of predictions, automate everything, and it would be amazing. But there's a chicken and egg problem. In order to build a product that uses data and models, you need to have users to collect data from. And in order to have users, you need to already have a product. So eventually, we figured out what people actually need. In our case, they need to know what's normal and what's not, and they need an easy way to connect to specialists. So that's what we're doing. And eventually, if we can add some cool bells and whistles, then great. But for now, we're just happy making something that people need. Lesson two, outsource as much as possible. Related to keep it, keeping it simple is not building everything custom. We made the mistake of building our whole website from scratch from the start. We thought, ah, tools like Squarespace are for non-technical people. Um, wrong. These tools are for people who need to move fast, which is every early stage startup founder. Speed is incredibly important when you're iterating to find product market fit. And even if something custom is way better to start, you should still use the fastest thing. The exception is for whatever your competitive advantage is. So if your product is some software that does something no one else does, then yes, build that in-house. But everything else, outsource. Eventually you can build custom, but that's after you know you're building the right thing. Lesson three, be comfortable with uncertainty. So it's no surprise that startups are full of risk and uncertainty in a big picture way. But what I didn't realize is that even the little day-to-day -day things are full of risk and uncertainty. As engineers, we get accustomed to instant feedback. Your tests pass or fail, or your model accuracy goes up or down. You get instant and measurable feedback all the time. And that is not always the case as the founder of a startup, especially in the early days when you don't have enough users to do A-B testing. So you have to get comfortable doing things without knowing if it's gonna work. We decided early to invest in a content marketing strategy, knowing it would take time to see results. For us, it took 15 months. Lesson four. Recharge so you can keep going. Know where you get your energy. There's a lot of literature out there on introverts and extroverts, so if you fall neatly into one of those boxes, you know what to do. You just have to schedule in that recharging time. However, I've never known which one I am. I just learned about the term ambivert, which basically means both. So if you're an ambivert like me, you might need to learn by trial and error how you can recharge. I learned the hard way. After seven back-to-back -back initial sales meetings in one day, I need a walk. Lesson five, remember your worth. Going from an expert in your field to being just okay at a lot of different things can be really tough on your self-confidence. Keep in mind two things. First, you don't have to be an expert in everything to succeed. In fact, it might actually be better to be just good enough so you can find your fanatical first customers that don't care whether your website looks amateur or your sales pitch isn't the most polished. They're just thrilled about what you're building. Second, you probably are, will become more of an expert than it feels like. So find people who boost you up and remind you that you're awesome. I'm very lucky to have an amazing network of brilliant and kind people that I respect and that respect me. Without them, it'd be a struggle. So those are five of the important things that I learned from the journey from technical to CEO. 
I hope that you remember them when you go on to build your own company.